Is um, Chief Bartran, the Bartranizer, BTW Tribe, Bartranized World. I appreciate everyone coming through either now or on the replay game, which has been very strong. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> um, I've been um, working a dedicated account. You know, y'all know I drive trucks, so I've been working a dedicated account all this week to help out. And um, so I was working way longer hours than what I usually work. I was doing, I think I did 12, 12, 12 hours a day for the past five days. So um, I'm in recovery mode today. LAB1, welcome. I'm in recovery mode today, pretty much. And then I'm back on the road tomorrow. But I should have much more time next week. Hopefully you all don't hear the... Um, the rumble of the truck because my air conditioning is on. It's actually the battery is actually recharging in the truck. You know what I'm saying? LAB1, would you do a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Um, 
do a thumbs down if you can hear the um, rumble of the truck. You know, and do a thumbs up if you can't hear the rumble of the truck. You know, I'm trying to make sure that I don't give you all a... Um, I can cut the truck off for a moment while I do this and cut it back on um, and everything. Um, so whoever else comes through. Yeah, peace to you, man. Um, so because of that, I haven't been active on social media, which I think is pretty good. Oh, man, I just missed what you did. Do that again, LAB1. Do that one more time. Um, so... Um, I've been, um, because I'm doing it for my phone sometimes. I don't know why it does this. I'll be there. Peace. Um, I don't, you know, so I haven't been active because I've been, you know, uh, working like 12-hour days for the past. Uh, thumbs up. You can hear me. Can you hear the thing? Can you hear the rumble of the truck? You know, I, I you know, because I got my the truck, the batteries recharging the truck. Thumbs down if you can hear the rumble of the truck. You can hear it. Okay, let me cut this off. Um, hold on. Or maybe reposition myself because I don't want that noise to be. Let me cut this off. All right, is that better? Is that better? Is that better? You know, the battery is recharging, but it'll cut on. I ain't worried about that. In fact, what I'll do, I'll just cut it off right quick. Okay, that's better. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off the. Um, I'm just going to cut the battery, cut the truck off so that the um, battery won't. Um, yeah, I'm going to cut everything off. Hold on. Yeah, let me cut it off. Yeah. So now I've cut off everything so that, um, you know, the battery won't take a charge to the point where I can't start my truck. <laughs> you know. All right. So. Um, so, yeah. So uh, but you all may hear I'm sitting at a truck stop, so you may hear trucks passing by in the background. But that's what you should. That's the only background noise you should hear right now. Um, but, yes, because I've been, um, you know, putting in the work, you know, um, I haven't really been able to hop on to. Um, what the hell? I haven't been able to hop on to um, YouTube or my spaces the way I like to to weigh in on some of the some of the stuff I've been hearing. Some of the good, some of the stuff that is, that is cool. And, of course, because this is Twitter, there's a whole bunch of foolishness on Twitter, you know, <laughs> all around, you know. And so I've been um, giving a lot of content to discuss. So um, we're going to get into this right here. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, yeah, man, come on, Albie. I mean, first of all, before I get into Brandon Miller in school uh, injury zone, Albie. What's up with Dane, man? Why ain't, Why is it that he's not in Miami yet, bro? The last time we talked, I thought you said this was a done deal. I thought you said this was a done deal in Miami. You know? Uh-oh. Who is this? You want to come up? Come on up here, man. It's like, what is up, brother? Tell me. What's up? What's happening? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, brother. I couldn't hear the truck, by the way. You was fine. You could turn it back on. You, your uh, volume was Okay, good. you couldn't hear the truck in the background? No, nah, I couldn't hear it. You were good. Okay, good. I'll cut it back on there so the battery can charge up. Okay. But yeah, so what's happening? Um, what's up? That's, that's what, like, the insiders for the heat that I follow on in Miami, like, two of them have already said it's done. They just, I guess they're just holding out. I don't know what they waiting on. I, I have no clue, but... From what I heard, the insiders are saying the deal's done. I don't know why they're waiting to say it. Then what they waiting on then? Just get the shit done. <laughs> get they the shit like done. doing a seven team trade. Like they trading with like seven different teams. It's it's crazy. So who's the so where's the issue at? Is it with Miami or is it with Portland right now? Where's it's, the issue? It's with Portland because they don't want Tyler Hero. They want like two players and then like five picks and Miami able to get them the five picks, but I don't know who the player's going to be. It might be Caleb and then somebody from a different team. It's not going to be Bam, though. Hell no. Hell no. They're not getting Bam. <laughs> they, they get, they'll be lucky to get Caleb Martin. So, mm. that's what's going on. Duncan about. Robinson? Nah, he's staying. Okay. 
So Duncan over hero. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. You want to stay on as a speaker? You want to drop out? No, I'm going to be listening. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate the update, man. You know, uh, I appreciate the update, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, okay. I want to, um, we're going to begin with, um, first of all, I think we, I think that Summer League now, there's a lot of, Summer League is very like political. And this is something that's been discussed in the past, certainly on the Lit House has been discussed. You know, I've been a part of those discussions on the Lit House in the past, you know. Um, Summer League is a big, Summer League is really more of a political type gathering, right? Some players in Summer League that you see will never make it to an NBA court. You know what I'm saying? They won't. Some of them are there. Some of them are there just to be bodies every year, right? You know, it is a showcasing of the rookies, yes, as far as them being seen for the first time. But officially, those rollouts, Summer League is just made to whet your appetite for them in the, you know, to in into the regular season. Because right now, these rookies, all of them, they're still raw. They just got with their teams. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I wasn't tripping when I saw when Wimby had his first game against Charlotte. I wasn't tripping. I said, it's his first game. Same with Brandon Miller. I said, it's his first game. Relax. Even with Scoot, you know, it's his first game. Relax. He's not no fucking goat yet. Instant goat. Goats aren't made instantaneously. You don't, you don't, you don't instant make a goat, you know, goats and greatness is built over time, over repetition and things like that. You know, I think the phenomenon of LeBron James has skewed that expectation and also the marketing wing of the NBA has also skewed that expectation. There is fun in watching the journey of the players you know right now we are going through a transition in the nba where the established stars and legends you know are being you know they've collected their rings some like jimmy butler are looking to get a ring dane etc even demar Derozan, they're on the clock because New blood is in the league, and now, new now some of the younger stars are beginning to collect their bags. Lamelo Ball, Anthony Edwards, even Tyrese. Though I don't really necessarily consider him in the same tier as Anthony Edwards and Lamelo Ball, but Tyrese still got his bag. So some of the players that have come up now are beginning to collect bags. You know, um, are beginning to some of them are beginning to get into the playoffs. You got Luca. You know, um, Jokic just won a championship. So there is a changing of the guard going on in the NBA overall right now. LeBron is on the clock. KD is on the clock. Steph is on the clock. Kawhi Leonard on the clock. You know what I'm saying? Paul George on the clock. You know what I'm saying? They're all on the clock. You know what I'm saying? You know, in terms of collecting more rings, they're on the clock. And for other players to get one ring through their whole NBA run, they're definitely on the clock. So I can see why Dane would want to go to Miami to get with Jimmy Butler so that with Bam at the bio so they can form a big three down there to see if they can move for a ring. And with the East being the way it is, Miami with Dane as an addition to that team, they could they could match Boston down there, although Boston tooled up and got um, Chris Tasperzingas. I think that was a big addition for them. So we'll see how that goes. You know what I'm saying? You know, oh, you know. So having said this, you know, this is for fan. The summer league is for fan consumption. That's all it is. And it's also for player politicking. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what summer league is for. Nothing more. You if you if there have been players that have been trash in summer league who went on to play very well once the regular season began. There are other players that have played very well in summer league and you didn't hear from their asses again 
after Summer League was over with. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, for me, I'm not getting too deeply hyped over what I see in Summer League. You can grab certain clues about players. I'm going to talk about this right now in terms of, okay, I see these things. I see other things. But I'm not gonna delve too deeply into it, man, because shit, it is summer league. God damn it, you know. And this is not. This is not. These are not players who've been playing for 20 years and all this other stuff. They have just getting started, you know. And we'll see how it goes. Um, of course, Scoot had his first game. I'm gonna go with Scoot first. <laughs> you know, I didn't necessarily because I've been on the roll a lot. I have I haven't been able to watch these games, so I've been catching some highlights, and also I've been. Uh, Twitter, you know, through uh, new media and other tweets, I've been keeping up, you know, coach, shout out to you, coach, man, you've been a great uh, resource for me. You know, I, I, um, I look forward to your tweets on basketball. I trust your, I trust your judgment on it, you know, and, um, and you've given great insight into some of these, some of what you have seen in these games and you've tweeted some of them out. So coach, Coach and brother, I, I appreciate, I truly appreciate um, what um, you have tweeted out because it has helped keep me informed in a way that I can, you know, make a sound judgment on these things. You know what I'm saying? You know, and um, so um, school is injured already. Now, um, some of the school lovers said that um, Scoot Henderson. One of the reasons why there was talk about having Scoot Henderson come to the Charlotte Hornets was because uh, Scoot, Scoot can play when LaMelo's injured. Well, here Scoot is injured already. It's like, okay, so uh, Scoot is already injured in his first summer league game. Scoot was injured during G League. Now he's injured again. So our, now if we or I had the Brandon Miller reaction, that has been to him, then I will be all over Twitter saying that Scoot Henderson is injury prone today. He's not going, you know, he's too injury prone. Now, Scoot's style of play, you know, Scoot's style of play, he's going to be hurt because he's small, athletic, yes, but those small guards, do you all know how many injuries? And do you all know how many injuries that Allen Iverson played through, <laughs> particularly in this MVP year? Do you all know how many injuries he played through? You know, how many injuries um, Steve Francis played through? You know, when you when you're a small guard going into the into the painted area, even in even in today's lax rules, you still get it. You know, so. We'll see how this goes. We'll see if 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 the if the Trailblazers are smart, they will shut Scoot down for the rest of the, for the rest. They would if they're smart, they should shut Scoot down. His shoulders hurt. Do exactly what uh, the Thunder did with Chet. Oh, shut him down. Shut him down. Shut him down. You know they shut Chet down, and they were smart to shut him down to get him a chance to get some weight on. In essence, they registered Chet last year. That's what they did. The Thunder. And that was smart. You know, now Chet is back. He looks, you know, uh, you know, he's always gonna be thin. Chet, Chet, Wimby, Bobo, they're gonna be some be something like a Giannis. They may put on muscle, but they're not gonna fill out like Shaquille or Zion. You know, they're gonna be thin, they're gonna be tall guys that put on muscle. And really, especially in the case of Wimby. Wimby may not want to put on too much muscle, man. Big men that put on a lot of muscle have issues with their feet. You know what I'm saying? All that weight on their feet and their joints, that stuff takes a toll. So they should be careful in how they have them put on weight. You know what I'm saying? You know, they should. You know, even Giannis has been injured a few times lately. You see? You know? Um, and everything. That's Joel's, that's Joel's problem. As a big, he's a big guy. He's going to have foot problems and other issues. You know, same with Zion. Zion, though he sh he's short, he has big man problems with his, with his injuries. Those are common problems with big men. Feet problems, knees, you know, things like that. Um, you know, big men of the past always had foot problems. 
Rick Smith, for some of you men that know these guys, those of you who watch basketball know what I'm talking about. Rick Smith, the Dunkin' Dutchman that played for Indiana, notoriously had feet problems. You see what I'm saying? You know? And other players, centers, historically, they have problems with their feet and or their knees because of all the weight that they carry when they're 250 to 300 pounds, jumping up and down all the time. That shit fucks with your knees, you know, and your feet, you know? Um, so that was smart. And for Scoot, I think they should shut him down. But because of the NBA marketing machine, if he's able to get back out there, I think they're going to put him back out there. I don't think that's smart. I think they should just go ahead. Scoot had an okay game, the first game, you know, shut him down. The people saw a little bit. That's all. You know, they can, they can, they can speculate on Scoot for the rest of the, for the rest of the off season until he comes back, show some clips of him dunking, whatever. The people, the right now, the people are programmed to accept that, you know, at this point, you know, but um, I would say they should shut him down. They should shut him down right now and don't let him play anymore. Let that show the heel. There's no need to put him back on the court this early in the game. This is a fucking priest. This is a fucking summer league. This is not even the regular season. It would be foolish to put him back out there, but we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do, you know? Um, so as far as Scoot is concerned, the greatest incomplete. Uh, you know, the greatest incomplete right now. So I haven't seen enough to say anything. And honestly, um, I'm not going to really give a serious assessment to any of these players until after their rookie season. Once I see them go through a full rookie season, through a full 82 games, however many games they play in it, <coughs> the role that they all will have on their teams, then we'll see as far as then I'll come back this time next year and say, I think Scoot got something. I think they got something in Scoot. You know what I'm saying? And Brandon Miller has great potential. Wimby, X, Y, and Z. Right now we can talk about, right now I can talk about what I want to see. You know, but I'm not finna, I'm not for y'all. I'm not gonna be on in that calling anyone to bust at this point. It's too early to say that. It's way too early to say that. You know, now in the case of Wiseman, I could say, hey, this is year three, brother. What are you doing? You know, you still in summer league in three year three. What is that about? You should be collecting. You should be collecting a big bag right now, with James Wiseman. He's not. So that now we begin to say, okay, what's happening? Same with Book. The same with Kai Jones. They've been in. They've been around for a while. So it's time. So those players are on the clock right now. Now you'd say it, particularly about Book. You know, but they are on the clock right now. You know, it is what it is. You know, they've been there, especially around the time of their extensions. If they don't perform well enough, they could find themselves out. Literally out, not traded, not in a package. They could find themselves out. You know, that's unfortunately, that's how the NBA rolls. You know, you go through all this shit to get into the NBA. And if you don't, if you're not able to perform and stay, You'll be out of there after going through all the shit you went through to get in. You'll be out with the quickness, you know. So we'll see. Um, Wimby, I'm going to say Brandon for last. Wimby Nyama. <laughs> Paul George, if you all, I would, there's a podcast I would recommend to everyone listen to in terms of sports. I'm going to talk about this more in my um, Rise of the New Media series is what I'm going to call it. Right. And that's going to be on YouTube, you know. And by the way, I want to thank everybody for their support, man. You know, even though I haven't been active this week, my subs have remained. The support has stayed. No one has dropped off, you know. So I appreciate everyone's support of this platform, the BTW, man. You know, um, even when I did the rebranding and everything, you all stayed. Yo, y'all stayed 10 toes down with uh, Brother Bartram. So I'm appreciative of you all's support. And. In fact, the BTW has been, since the rebrand, we've actually been growing very well. We've been growing all over, not just here on, not just here on, we've been growing on Twitter, you know, spaces now. I started, when I started spaces, it was me by myself talking. Now, you all are in here with me. I thank you all for being here. Um, YouTube subs have went up. Um, you know, TikTok is beginning to go up, you know. Um, Instagram is going up 
And now that they have threads, you know, now I've hopped onto threads. I'm going to see if I can build that up as well. So I appreciate everybody's support, man, of this platform. You know what I'm saying? I do. Um, so uh, Wimby had a rough first game. I said, okay. I said, it's his first game. You know what I'm saying? In the United States. Considering, hold on. Considering the controversy that he's already involved in, Britney Spears, the little bitch ass, you know, it's like, how the, you know, it's like, bitch, you haven't, you ain't been popping for almost 10 years now. Why are you even relevant in the conversation? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I said it, you know, um, um, yeah, you know, hey, there ain't no children supposed to be on here. Um, it's like, who the fuck you think you are to walk up on anybody? To touch them and not get checked, right? Like, who the fuck you think you are that you can just walk up on somebody just because you see them? You walk up on them and reach over to them, and then get mad when the security knock your hand away, and in the process of knocking your hand away, you smack your own fucking self in the face. Then the word come out: Oh, he they smacked her to the ground, you know. All that shit. Like we back in the like we back in the days of the Black Wall Street and shit. You know, it's like, no. Nah. You what your ass should have did if you wanted to approach him. Instead of coming from the back, your ass should have came from the front. You know what I'm saying? And if he ignored you, then so be it. But you know Karen. You know, Karen don't like to be ignored. You know, it's like, how dare you ignore me, you know? So she got what she got. And then some of her fans is harassing Wimby. So Wimby come over to the United States from France and he experiences United States home cooking. <laughs> That's just what it is, you know. So Wimby, baby, you know, it is what it is. Tony Parker should have told you about this when he was over here. See, Tim Duncan and the rest of them, hopefully they're telling you this. And yeah, they're not sugarcoating this shit over here, man. You know, but you got issues in France already. You got, but, but France, you got issues of your own, I see. But that's that's gonna be another talk that I'll probably do on YouTube as far as what I'm seeing over there. Very interesting. But you know, Brandon Miller had a pretty good game, you know, overall. I think. Altogether, I think he has, right? He had the game he's supposed to have. He's a three game, he's in three games as a rookie on a higher level than college. I didn't I didn't expect Brandon Miller to score fifty points in his first game in the summer league. I didn't expect that. You know what I'm saying? It's like I didn't expect Wimby to do that. Or Scoop. It's like y'all niggas are crazy, you know, you know, to 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 feed your little biases on these players. Some of it created because Brandon didn't get the hype that Scoop and Wendy got. You know what I'm saying? And because the white media did not hype up Brandon, then, of course, you're not going to hype him up because Master didn't give you permission to hype him up. You know what I'm saying? Now, for people who legitimately saw Scoop as a compliment. I said this before. I'm going to say it again. People who saw Scoot Henderson as a compliment to LaMelo Ball. Right? I have no issue with that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how I saw Scoot potentially if he was to come to the Charlotte Hornets. I said he would be a complimentary piece to LaMelo Ball. He will not overtake LaMelo at all. You know, even though he may think he can, Scoot Henderson would not have been the guy in Charlotte. Though there would have been those in Charlotte who tried to make him that, it would not have happened. Not the face of Puma. Not a man who just made a, a quarter of a billion dollars. That's not happening. You're not going to put a quarter of a billion dollars in the goddamn corner while Scoot, a motherfucking rookie from the G League, cooks. That ain't happening. That's a waste of money. You know what I'm saying? And as you can see, you know, honestly, I thought that um, school would be flipped for Zion. I thought that um, between Portland and um, Charlotte that they would flip school for Zion, you know, because the Pelicans openly called for school to come down there. And I thought, that, oh, okay, shit, school can be flipped for Zion. I thought Dame, that might be good for Dame. They'll keep him in Charlotte if they, uh, not, they'll keep him in Portland um, if they manage to flip school for Zion. And then Dame and Zion can run it in Portland. Or LaMelo and Zion can run it in damn Charlotte. That's what I thought was going to take place, you know. But Portland, uh, the Jailblazers, 
decided that they're going to go ahead and just build around Scoot. They've kind of made that clear that Dame's day is over. And the Charlotte Hornets decided to say no to a Zion deal. It is what it is. Now, a what? Yeah, it was reported by the Lit House on the night of the draft that a deal for Zion was on the table, and Charlotte said no. That's what was reported. Now, that has been not been talked about much, but I want to watch that. I want to kind of watch that. You know, that came from Rev's mouth. You know, he said that a deal for Zion was on the table, and Charlotte said no. I said, ooh, wee, ooh, wee. I said, that is interesting. And now, as you can see the moves that Mitch is making, I understand why that Charlotte said no now. You know, I'm going to get into that before I get up out of here. Um, when B, when Brandon Miller stripped him of the ball, I tweeted it out. I said, that is, that's rookie inexperience, right? Victor could have just turned and shot over Brandon Miller right there. He had him in his spot. He could have just turned and shot over him. But I think over time, he will learn that, you know. Brandon Miller, I mean, Wimby Yama, I know that um, Tim Duncan and David Robinson is mentoring him. I don't think that they are, their games, I don't think they can, you know, Tim Duncan may be able to teach him how to shoot the ball off the glass, some shit like that. But Wimby Yama's game, he needs to be looking and studying Chris Das Porzingis and Hakeem Olajuwon. Those are the two that Wimby needs to be studying. Chris Das Porzingis will take you into the post until he get to his spot. Then at 7-4, he will turn and shoot over you. When Chris Das was an all-star, when he was riding high before the injuries, that's how he ate. He didn't have to, you know, and sometimes he'll get in and dunk the ball. He'll run on the fast break and dunk the ball and stuff like that. But in the half court, in the half court in New York, he couldn't do it in Dallas, unfortunately. <laughs> Luca took up so much space in Dallas that Chris Stapps really could not get his game going in Dallas, right? Some of that may be due to injuries. But Porzingis was very underutilized in Dallas. I am curious to see how Boston is going to use Porzingis, if they will put him back in the post the way New York did. When Porzingis was in New York, they will put him right in that mid-post, mid-range area and let him go to work. And Chris Stapps Porzingis would back you down because he had the size. He came in thin. He got a little more size. He would back you down. Not all the way. He didn't have no sizzling hook. He didn't have none of Nikhilo Jokic's moves. He didn't. And still, it, I don't think he still had, does now. But he really don't need those moves. All Porzingis has to do, because he's so damn tall and his release is so high, is get to a spot in that mid-range, mid-post area, then just shoot that fadeaway over you, the way Dirk Lewinsky did. And he'll hit the shot, because you can't block it. You know, Wimby needs to practice those types of moves. Number one, it'll save his body. He's too thin right now. If, he tries, if, if Wimby tries to get too physical, Inside, he's going to end up hurting himself because he's not big enough right now. Wimbenyama is not big enough to be trying to go toe to toe with Joel Embiid on the inside. Wimbenyama is not big enough to be trying to go toe to toe with Nikola Jokic on the inside on the physical contest, right? He's not big enough to go against Robert Williams the third inside on the physical. You know these centers, these centers. The rules have changed, but there's still some physicality still in the NBA. Not the way it used to be, but there's still enough of it that Wimby be knocked on his ass. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, you know, um, if 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 you know if he tries to flex the way he did in summer league, I said, "Oh, young man," I said, "Brother, <laughs> I know you need it for your confidence, but I wouldn't be doing that right now if I were you." Because the hype, Wimby, Wimby Yama's hype, you know, it's good as well. But Wimby's hype, Wimby has been so hyped that he's going to get the Lonzo Ball treatment his rookie season. He's going to get it. They came after Lonzo. When Lonzo, the last time a player that was really, really hyped coming out was Lonzo Ball. A lot of that was LeVar, you know, but still, he was hyped. But the NBA... Marketing machine went along with the hype now. That's how I got into LA in the first place. Magic, you know. Lonzo played his first season summer league. He did okay, right? He got the summer league MVP. So here we go. Lonzo Ball got the summer league MVP. We have not heard from him since. So don't put too much stock in the summer league, baby. You know what I'm saying? 
you know, at least Lonzo got that trophy, got that trophy because he may not be playing the NBA no more. But again, I'll talk about that when I do my Bulls segment because I am, you know, Chicago guy. So I'm going to discuss uh, what's going on with the Bulls, which I'm kind of I'm kind of sitting on the edge of my seat wondering what they're about to do. But I understood the changes were going to be made because the, the ownership of the Bulls do not like paying money. And they didn't even make it into the damn playoffs. Shit, I already knew they was going to make some changes after that, you know. Um, but I'll talk about that when I talk about the Bulls more exclusively. Um, but Wimby needs to, Wimby has a guard type game. Akeem Olajuwon said that his moves were designed for guards more so than bigs, right? So I know they want to keep him in house. This is the Spurs culture those bastards you know so they wouldn't want to see Wimby studying Akeem and other players they want him studying Tim Duncan and David Robinson and unfortunately their games their games don't fit with today's game particularly with Wimby's skills Wimby Yama needs to scud need to study Kristaps Porzingis he needs to study some of Laurie Markkinen and he needs to in, in terms of his moves he needs to study a king. A king would have did a turnaround. A king would have did a did a turnaround on Brandon Miller and been there and would have been there for the dunk. Brandon wouldn't have had a chance. Another thing, uh, Wimby tends to bring the ball down. If you notice, know Wimby can as a seven five. Wimby should keep the ball up. The coach knows this. Keep the ball up because can't nobody reach you. You'll force them to foul you. But I think in time, he'll learn those things. In time, he'll be, you know, because obviously he didn't get that type of training in France. So he's raw. I mean, even with his skill, even with his game, I noticed that when on his 27-point game, didn't nobody really touch him like it was with the Hornets. The Hornets were physical with him from what I seen, right? Now, again, I didn't watch the game. Brandon Miller was Brandon Miller was on him. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not sure if Kai Jones was on him or not. But Brandon Miller, when I saw Brandon Miller, he wasn't like off of him. Brandon Miller was body to body with him. He couldn't just move. He had to try to force it, which what led to the turnover. You know, um, overall, I like his instincts. So I think Wimby will be okay. But I think he's going to have it rough his rookie season. You know, I do not see an all-star <laughs> and all that madness coming from him the way they said it. But, again, that's because of the LeBron effect. You know, LeBron James, rather than give him credit for being a phenomenon in this NBA, the fact that he was able to come in from day one, you know, and exceed the hype, that ain't that is not something that's just done. LeBron has done it from day one and still is doing it up until now. You know, people are hunting for that next LeBron slash Jordan type. Those players don't just come like that. It took Jordan time to become who he is. LeBron, even, even coming in NBA ready, it took time for him to even grow further. Give these players time. Stop all this damn hype. Hopping all over Twitter, declaring players busts and all that shit, and they only played three games. Not even three real games. Some league ain't no real game. You know? Like I said, now, if you begin to see after a few seasons, one or two seasons, you don't see growth, then it's like, okay, what's going on with you, Wiseman? You know, use pick number two, baby. You know, what's happening? You know, even Book and others. What's going on? And some other ones, too. It's like, okay, what's happening with y'all? You know, because you are about to be out in a minute or you're going to be typecast in a way that you'll never be a star in the NBA. Because once you get typecasted in the league, Draymond talked about this. And, they, um, and oh, yeah, the podcast. I knew I meant to do something. Paul George has the best uh, NBA podcast, hands down. I love his podcast. Above Draymond. You know, even though I can I can fuck with Draymond's a little bit. J.J. Reddick's. It's okay, you know, for a different energy. Gilbert Arenas has a nice podcast, you know. But Paul George's podcast, hands down, I, I love his podcast. I love the energy of his podcast. You know, it's it's I love it. And in, on, on that podcast, Draymond was a guest. And they went they went into how they're going to defend Victor Wimbenyama. You know, they went into that. Um, number one. Ah, welcome, KJ. Man, welcome, man. Welcome, welcome. Welcome everybody. Easy um, money, AM, 
Um, somebody I know who that is. Um, can read your whole um thing, you know, but everybody welcome in who's coming through here. But um they said <laughs> they're going to what use physical with whatever they can get away with on the physical, they're gonna use that on Wimby. And Wimby has and what I have seen is that more physical teams are going to give Wimby problems his first year. Teams that aren't as physical, Wimby will be able to do what he want. That's kind of what I saw against um, Portland Trailblazers. They wasn't as physical with Wimby as Charlotte was, at least from what I've seen. So teams with physical, long guys are going to give Wimby problems. Teams that don't have a physical front court, Wimby should be able to eat on those so you can kind of pencil in where the spurs will play well and where they won't based on that but we'll see we'll look at that going forward you know but um that's what i see with Wimbin yama right now you know, he has good skills he need to use his height to his advantage Wimbin yama should not be trying to play like shaq because he doesn't have the body for that you know he shouldn't be trying to play like shaq you know he should be playing more like porzingis more like a king Elijah Wan. Use those guard moves to get to where your spot is and then shoot over whoever's guarding. That's it. That's all. And that should be his game. I would dare say, um, hell, if he really want to get into his bag, go back and study Ralph Sampson, man. You know, those players. You know, Ralph Sampson was a 7'4", damn near unicorn, man. I mean, I've seen highlights of Ralph Sampson rebounding the ball and bringing it up back in the 80s, man. So this ain't nothing new. There were players then, but you know, the NBA was kind of different on the energy then than it is now. They didn't want no bigs out uh, at the three-point line at the time. They said, you tall, you need to be close to the basket. That's Kai Jones' problem, you know. Um, Kai Jones is out playing like a guard when his ass should be close to the basket, so he can be dunking it, you know. But, um, you know, hey, I ain't saying no more about that. Now we'll go to Brandon. <clears throat> I like what I've seen with Brandon. You know, now I don't know. The, the bias against Brandon Miller to me is crazy and it's agenda driven, right? There are those who are on Twitter who are against Brandon Miller simply because Rev is for Brandon Miller. That's crazy to me. <laughs> that is crazy that you are cheering against Brandon Miller because Rev and the new media are talking Brandon Miller, Brandon Miller up. Therefore, you're going to make it your business to talk him down on the basis of new media and Rev and other new media talking him up. To me, that is absolutely crazy, bro. Your whole basketball opinion is generated over the opinion of Rev and new media. It's like, oh, and you know, you know, you know, I'm talking to, you know, and there's others. It's not just, you know, it's, it's others. The whole the entire portion of the Charlotte fan base that waits to hear what Rev's takes are, so they can do the so they can say the opposite. Regardless of how nonsensical it is, they listen to Rev talk up a player. You know, Rev and New Media. You know, and it's also myself, Let Book Cook. We talked up James Book Night. They made it their business to talk him down. <laughs> you know. We talked up LaMelo Ball. They made it their business to talk him down. Even to the point where they're calling for Scoop to come in to replace him. Not to be with him, to replace him. Right? You know, for for a entity to be in your head the way media's in their heads like that, you know, <laughs> to me it's comical. You know, it is. You know, so I'm not, when I talk about Brandon Miller, you know, those who legitimately are talking about him from a basketball point of view, I will engage you in that conversation, right? If you are here, either now in the replay, and your issue with Brandon Miller is because Rev and the Lit House talked him up, then don't even come on, don't even come in my threads, don't even come in on my tweets. <laughs> you know, because you're discussing personality and not basketball. And I'm not here for that. You know what I'm saying? You know, Rev talked him up. You decided to go against Rev. The Lit House cooked you. <laughs> the Lit House cooked you. <laughs> cooked you good. And now you're licking your wounds from being cooked by the Lit House. And so now Brandon Miller is the object of your disdain. Not because 
he's a bad player, but because you want to show Rev something. You know, it's like, come on, that to me is childish. You know, I mean, but that is what it is. You know, I'm going to leave that alone. You know, Brandon Miller to me, if you watch what Charlotte is doing, I know, Brother Quincy, if you come through here, because I tweeted out a starting potential starting lineup that I could see for the Charlotte Hornets, right? LaMelo Ball at the one, Brandon at the two, Miles at the three, PJ at the four, if they can sign him, <laughs> or Gordon Haywood at the three, Miles at the four, and Mark Williams at the five, right? <laughs> um, I think... Word is, and this is not confirmed because I've heard it officially from Charlotte, but rumors on Twitter now is that uh, that P.J. Washington is going to end up taking the qualifying offer from the Charlotte Hornets because he didn't get the money he wanted. So he's going to take the qualifying offer and then um, go next season to be an unrestricted free agent to test the market next year. The same as Miles Bridges. So that's an interesting setup. K.V. O'Neal, I salam alaikum to you, brother. Tiffany, welcome. So... That sets up a very interesting dynamic for Charlotte, right? If P.J. Washington, and this is all tied into Brandon Miller, if P.J. Washington takes a qualifying off from Charlotte, then I am sure, I am sure that in that scenario, P.J. Washington is going to want to start because I am sure, the same with Miles Bridges, I am sure that they are going to want to play in a way that raises their value for free agency next year so that they can collect whatever bag that they want to collect next year. In order for them to collect a bag next year, they have to be on the floor to do that. If P.J. Washington signs a qualifying offer and is coming off the bench, then he ain't getting no bag next year. He's not going to get no bag next year because you're not going to pay a six-man starter's money. That ain't happening. And P.J., from what I've seen, from the rumors that have come out, from what he wants, P.J. Washington wants starter's money, right? He's not going to get starter's money if he's coming off the bench for Charlotte. So, Mitch, shout out to you, Mitch. Mitch has not made a lot of moves in the offseason, and I think I understand why. Mitch has set up the new ownership very well <laughs> because with the qualifying offers set for Miles Bridges and potentially PJ, if he takes it, that sets up the new ownership now to get in, see what the books are, really. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they find out Jordan to gamble with all the shit. You know, no, I, no, I ain't going to say that. Hey, Michael, it's, it is what it is. Had to jab you a little bit. Um, <laughs> they can get in and really see what the books are, right? If they're not already looking over the books now to see, okay, how much money do we really have up in this bitch? You know what I'm saying? And then they can make decisions that the trade deadline or into the offseason because they'll have money to play with. Even if they can't move Gordon Haywood, his money comes off the books this year. The only contracts that they will have that they're really tied to, of course, is LaMelo Ball's uh, contract and Terry's contract. Okay, uh, Cody Martin, I mean, it's a 40 million. It's not that big. I mean, if they really want to move him, I think they can. You know, they got Bryce McGowan's on the two way. They can move him if they can, you know, if they want to. Nick Richards is on a small contract. So they can move him if they, you know, they can move those guys if they want to. The only large contracts they really have outside of the middle ball is Gordon Haywoods and Terry Rosiers. Gordon's comes off the books. I do not expect Gordon to be on the Charlotte Hornets past the trade deadline because that contract is an expiring contract and it could be a good salary dump for other teams that can just grab Gordon for a quick, uh, maybe if they're looking to win, if they think that Gordon could be a good piece, maybe for the playoffs, maybe another team may take a chance on Gordon Haywood to provide some type of veteran leadership or whatever into the playoffs. And then at the end of the season, if it works, he get a ring. If not, then they can just let him go. But we'll see how that goes. But even if they can't move Gordon Haywood, his money come off the books. So Charlotte is going to have a lot of money to play with next season, right? Where they can actually realistically go after a, even if they resign Miles to a larger bag, it won't be, hey, Miles, sorry to say it, baby, but it ain't going to be that 174. That that is over with, but you'll get a larger bag, you know. They still have money to play with to get even, you know. Maybe you know if 
New Orleans is still interested, maybe they could revisit that Zion deal next season or whatever. You know, whatever. So they financially, Mitch has set them up very well. I see a scenario where if Brandon Miller can handle it, I believe Brandon may play the two. I believe he may play the two or the three. I don't think Brandon is big enough for the four. I don't think I don't think he's big enough to play the four. You know, he's he's 19. He has his body. He, he doesn't have his man body yet, you know. And I think that the utilization of his skill set will be better at the three or the two. Now, Brandon has shown they can play good defense. Mitch has said that Brandon Miller can be a two, three, or four. Mitch has said this. So Mitch can see him playing the two. So if they don't get a point guard, right, I don't think they are. Or they may grab Isaiah Thomas. Miles has kind of, you know, put it out there in a tweet, OG, you know. Isaiah Thomas may come back. They let Dennis Smith Jr. go. I think that was a mistake, but, you know. But Dennis got to collect his bag. Dennis is barely back in the NBA. He got to collect. He got to play wherever the, whatever the hell he can. He can't wait on Charlotte. So I don't blame Dennis for taking that deal. Take the deal, Dennis, until you can build yourself up to the point where hopefully you can get a larger bag. But unfortunately, Dennis Smith Jr. is now a journeyman in the NBA. That might be his typecast for the rest of his career. He may never get the hype and the cachet that he had when he was in Dallas for Luka Kane, you know. But um, this is what I believe. I believe that they will. Rev had mentioned them staggering LaMelo Ball's minutes. I believe that. But I also believe that if Book, Book, is two Hunger Games going on in Charlotte right now. If you've seen the movie Hunger Games. Book, Amari, <laughs> Nick, and Bryce are all four in a Hunger Games situation. Really? to maybe try to see if they can start at the two or be one of the main guys off the bench at the two. I believe that Terry Rozier, to keep his, it depends, to keep his value up, they'll start Terry. You know what I'm saying? And Miller may be coming off the bench because I don't see a scenario where PJ is coming off the bench on the off a qualifying offer. His agents, if PJ got a good agent, he's going to call for PJ to start. Him and Miles are going to start, you know, with LaMelo Ball and then Mark Williams. So the only question is, who played the two? That's the only question I think that's left. If Brandon can handle it, Brandon shows promise. You know, he shows uh, flashes in summer league and then gets to work and show and, and competes for the job in, at training camp. I think Brandon can. Uh, I think Brandon has a chance if he can do it well because his basketball IQ and his ball handling is good enough where he can, he can be a secondary ball handler to LaMelo Ball, right? He plays pick and roll, which is good. You know, he can defend on any switches. Oh, I think is excellent, including up to whip, even, even, you know, even um, challenging uh, Victor Wimbenyama. He's willing to do that. You know what I'm saying? So he's a willing defender, right? Um, and the team like that, interchangeable is what's needed because of the way the defenses are. You need interchangeable players that can able to switch and not um, – allow the defense to set. I believe that Terry Rozier, again, depending on what they want to do with him, if they're looking to keep Terry, even though it's 90 million, I know they don't want that on the bench, but I could see a scenario where Terry's running their second unit as the point guard. I could see that. Even if they start Terry, they put him with that second unit to stabilize it, to lead it, you know what I'm saying? To be the point guard for the second unit. If they don't have a point guard, like Isaiah Thomas or somebody else, I could see that. I could see that. I could see that. I could see Terry doing that because I don't think that between Book, Nick, uh, Nick Jr., Rice, of course not, and Amari, they can't run the point for the second unit. It'll be a disaster. They're seeing that right now. They can't run that second unit, not leading it. They're there to be set up. They need a point guard to set them up. Now, Terry, eh, I mean, you know, you could say Terry really isn't a point, but you know they see Terry as a point guard. You know, it's like they'll put Terry there on the second unit to run that second unit. That way Terry can collect his points, still get his stats, all that stuff, mainly with the second unit. I could see that. I could see that, you know. Now, I don't know if that's going to work well or not, 
you know, but Terry, I think they may use him as a serviceable point in the second unit. Or, 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 it is possible. See, but I don't know how this will work because I know if he got the respect. Brandon Miller could run the second unit. If they run it through him, he could run that second unit. I could see that now. Seven assists in the second game. Brandon Miller has, the if, if they would let go of the ball and let allow themselves to be set up by Brandon Miller, I believe he can set he could set Nick Jr. and Book and the rest of them up for their shots, right? You know, but in this in today's NBA, it's like, well, you know, you got to have the ball in your hand, bring it up, and all that madness, and and you know, instead of being set up by him, so I could kind of see that. But if Brandon plays very well, he could start at the two. It's not unfounded for that to be a possibility because Mitch himself said that Brandon is a two. So if Brandon's able to start the two, which in the, in the future scenario, possibly, he may have to because if Miles and P.J. Cooks next year cooks well as a three and a four, I don't see Charlotte letting them go. They'll, 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 pay, they'll pay Miles and P.J. because, you know, they are in love with them, particularly P.J. They love his dirty draws. They do. You know, so I could see a scenario where they keep PJ and Miles. And if Brandon can handle the two, they'll leave him at the two. Then what you got is a long modern day NBA lineup where the shortest person on that starting five is LaMelo Ball. That's crazy. You know, you know, um, or you know, LaMelo Miles, six seven, six six, you know, uh PJ six seven, six six. And because of the type of center they have with Mark Williams. They can kind of get away with under, they can kind of get away with undersized, like PJ at the four can work in Charlotte only because they have Mark Williams as the center. Because Mark Williams can clean up whenever, you know, PJ, when, whenever Mark Williams can be there to clean up whatever defensive lapses happens between PJ, Miles, you know, or even LaMelo, you know, because LaMelo likes to gamble. So Lamel's going to gamble for his steals, and sometimes he'll get the steal. Other times he'll miss, and if he miss, Mark Williams is there to have his back. You know, so the um, offense and the defense, I think, works well. The point guards can't be hidden anymore on that type of lineup. You know, we are, where are you going to hide Steph Curry in that lineup, on that lineup? You're going to put him on Brandon Miller, Brandon will shoot over him. You can put him on Lamelo Ball, Lamelo will cook him. You know, so you put him on P.J., P.J., you know, you put him in the pick and roll. If you put him on the forge, you can put Curry in the, in the pick and roll on the switch. You know, so the that lineup creates mismatches, right? And in the NBA, it's all about uh, mismatches, you know. So I could see that. And that lineup is long, switchability. The, the defensive possibilities is endless. There is no one you can switch on in that lineup. You switch on the pick and roll in that lineup. You switch off of LaMelo, and you end up getting Miles or PJ, who can stay in front of guards. You know, so I think all around... You know, it should make them, if they hold on to good defensive principles, which Steve Clifford teaches very well, Charlotte could be a very good defensive team next year with that starting five. But, of course, that depends still on what they're going to do with Gordon and Terry. Because you could end up with a starting five of LaMelo, Terry Rozier, Gordon Haywood, <laughs> Miles Bridges, and Mark Williams. You know, and that lineup, is LaMelo's not getting no MVP or all NBA with that goddamn lineup. He's just not. You know, so we'll see what they do with them. But Brandon, to me, I think Paul George is his GOAT. I think Brandon Miller should study some of Scottie Pippen's game. I think he should study Pip in terms of running an offense because Brandon has that potential. I can see it. Um, he should study Grant Hill. How Grant Hill, because Grant Hill could run an offense from the forward position. You know, he needs to study Tracy McGrady. You know what I'm saying? Tracy McGrady was 6'9". Y'all, you know, when you see Tracy McGrady's highlights, it's easy to kind of forget that Tracy McGrady is 6'9". He's the same height as Brandon Miller. Tracy McGrady was 6'9". At guard. So, that has been done before. You understand what I'm saying? You know, now, those are games he should study. Those guys. That group. Right? Along with Paul George. You know, on defense, he should study Kawhi's game. You know what I'm saying? He should study Kawhi Leonard on defense. You know, mix in a little KD also. Um, 
one of the things that um and I'm about to get out of here, one of the things that um that was interesting to me, which is why they're salty at new media, because new media beats them to the punch. <laughs> you know, we always beat them to the punch. While and from what I seen, Coach, uh, Coach Ant tweeted out today on Charlotte Radio, they still talk about school. And school is hurt. And you're still talking about them. You know, it's like y'all, you know, it's like <laughs> school is hurt, but yet you're still talking about them. That is absolutely crazy, man. It's like while they're busy talking about Scoot Henderson on their platforms, still, a player who's who is about to be handed the keys to another team, they're talking about him. After LaMelo got the keys to this, they're still talking about Scoot Henderson, right? While they're busy talking about Scoot Henderson, crying crocodile tears about him, the Lit House New Media got an interview a must-see, by the way, with Brandon Miller's trainer. If y'all haven't seen that interview, it's on YouTube. Y'all need to go and watch that. A lot of revealing information came out of that interview. Rev and DKM interviewed the trainer, and I believe manager, but certainly trainer of Brandon Miller. You know what I'm saying? And he went into detail on things they worked on when he was in high school and in his year in college, certain things they worked on, what what uh, the teams asked him to do, why he played the game the way he played it. You know what I'm saying? What? So while they're busy talking about Scoot over here, over there, we who are, you know, friends, allies, followers, you know what I'm saying, supporters of the Lit House were treated to a great interview with the player that Charlotte drafted, their people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so we get insight into Brandon Miller since he is the player that is here in Charlotte and not Scoot Anderson. So instead of Locked On Hornets, instead of the British Buzz, instead of Nada Edwards, Instead of Charted Radio getting that interview, which is what they should have been doing, to give insight into the draft pick that their team has taken. They're busy screaming, and Sam Dracula. They're busy screaming over Scoot Henderson when new media has reached out to Brandon Miller's team and got a member of his team to come on to the platform to discuss Brandon Miller in more detail. Right. You know, after that interview, I declared on Twitter, oh, shit, Charlotte is the house of new media. <laughs> it ain't the house of no one else. Everybody else is in the guest room somewhere. In terms of Charlotte, it is new media's house. It is what it is, because any other competent press corps within a city would have gotten that interview. They would have had him on. They would have been connected to the point where they could have had his people come on immediately. The way new media had Brandon Miller's trainer come on damn near the day after the draft. A day or two after. It's a must-see interview. It was a 30-minute interview, so it's not long because they didn't hold him long. But when the trainer talked about Brandon Miller's mindset and some of the things they were working on, these are the things now that I'm looking for when I watch Brandon Miller. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for the things that the trainer talked about, not this other shit that you all don't know about because you haven't taken the time to really delve into the layers of Brandon Miller because you've already written him off. You understand? Know you've written him off already. You know, so the excuses now that when Brandon have a bad game, then it'll just it'll just become what? Confirmation bias. That's all that is for most of you. You're not really looking at Brandon Miller as a basketball player. You know, he's an object of the Scooters who wanted Scoot Henderson here in Charlotte to replace LaMelo. Now I'll go into that more. Um, or the um, those who are caught up in the height of Scoot Henderson as this so-called generational talent, which he has not yet proven. You know, same with Wimby. You know, or others who simply want to spite Rev and New Media because 
you know, new media has talked about Brandon Miller. Therefore, they want to go the opposite of the rev just to prove a point that, you know, I'm not in no cult and all of the madness. You know, it's like, oh, stop it. Stop that. You know, it's like, you know, people, you know, people who agree with me, then you will deliberately disagree so that you can show that, you know, don't everybody don't listen to what you say. That that type of thing, that type of mindset really is how we fail. You know, it's really, it's not a good mindset to have. It's not good to come out of that. If if certain things you can have a consensus on is okay, then it's fine. Let it be there. But all this other extra madness, man, over personality, oh, miss me with that, you know. So, I'm going to upload, I'm probably going to go live later on YouTube today. I have not decided what I'm going to go live on. I've done a uh, pre-recorded content. It's ready to go on, uh, uh-oh. Let me move around. I'm sitting next to what type of truck is this? I'm sitting next to. I'm sitting next to a refrigerated truck. Let me move to the back of the truck away from it because the refrigerated part that came on and it grumbles loud. Um I did a, I did some content on Jill Scott on that um huh, on that um uh, when she um did a remix of the so called national anthem, which I loved. I loved it that she did it with a beautiful voice. So I did like an hour stream on that. I may upload that today or I may upload it tomorrow as a premiere. I may not be in the chat for that one. You know, or I may upload it later on. So I did one on that one. Um, now that LaMelo Ball has his deal signed, I'm going to do the um, Epics of Heme. The Epics of uh, the one-on-one part two. I did one already. I'm going to do my second epic on LaMelo Ball. Officially him, um, the epics of the of the one-on-one, the extension of LaMelo Ball. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more from my point of view. And I'm going to discuss on there some of the things I expect to see out of LaMelo Ball this year. Now that the keys have been handed over to him completely, that will be on YouTube. I may do that one tonight. Uh, you all can let me know. You know, we can drop it in the comments if y'all want me to talk about that. We'll, I'll do a show on that tonight. We can talk. We can chop that up tonight. Um, also, the rise of new media. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that series. I talked about it earlier. I'm gonna do that series, and I want to discuss. I'm gonna roll it into. You know, um, I kind of saw some things that Nada Edwards said, <laughs> and it's like you know. Nada is not Nada Edwards. You know, whatever, whatever son, whatever day you had in Charlotte, that day is over with. You know, you know, your time is over with. You know, and your people who are with you, their time is over with. You know, but what I want to do is roll that into a larger thing that I'm noticing, that I'm sure that you all have noticed, right? Every all the all the so-called traditional media is beginning to swing new media's way. You all do see that, right? You know what I'm saying? You all do see it. You see these things. You all noticing there's been a rise of podcasts going on, right? From Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless. You noticing this, right? And others. You know, in in doing things and formats that I never thought that I would see them do, but. You know, but I'm going to discuss that more in the rise of new media in that uh, rise of new media. And I'm going to talk on that probably on um, you see it, Tiffany, don't you? You see what they're doing. You know, um, I will probably I'm going to have a show on that on YouTube as well. So those are like some of the content that I've been itching to talk about that I would have talked about last week. You know, but I was tired in my truck. So that's three. Let me see. One, two. Yeah. Those are three things I want to talk about. Um, this week, you know, inshallah, um, God willing. Um, but um, for, the, for that Jill Scott, if you the type that liked, um, if you the type that's wrapped up in the red, white, and blue, you may not want to hop onto that. Um, you may not want to hop onto that content. <laughs> you may want to skip that one. You may want to skip that one. I talk about Jill Scott. You may want to skip that one. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't gonna be nice. You know, it's not gonna be nice. You know, I'm going to discuss my history with the Star Spangled Banner that goes back to when I was 16 years old. And I just made 52 a couple of days ago, you know. So I've been had the energy about the Star Spangled Banner. But I'll go, I've went into detail on it in that live. Also, um, 
music blue flame song will be dropping today i'm going to uh, work on dropping raindrops probably tomorrow or the next day you know um under you know the rebrand and everything um new distribution and other songs will be coming out I'm going to, you know, I've been fiending to get back in the studio, man. I haven't been in my studio all week, so I'm going to be doing studio work today. Um, I did a live stream a few a few days last week with me, Sean Bless, and Drum Keys. We was all having like a producer session in the um, in the um, in that live stream. So check that one out. You know, some um, some of the um, old uh, Blue Flame content I'm beginning to repost again. Like I said, I was. This ain't nothing new. I was going to do this anyway, you know, you know, but some of the blue flame content will be back up from the archives of the chief, you know, um, um, but the, um, but this is uh, chief Bartrand, uh, you know, I'm a chief, I'm a Choctaw, I'm from the bloodlines of my chief Tuscaloosa, and I'm going to take that mantle on, you know, um, as such, you know, I'm a shamanic chief, so a lot of spiritual will be talked. Um, other things. Oh, by the way, on my way out of here, I want to thank everybody for their support of the Tribal Meditation Chamber um, posting that I did on YouTube. It got 261 last I checked. And that's the most, in a very short period of time, that is the most that uh, people have really jumped on to that meditation series. Usually, because it's more cerebral and spiritual, people don't tend to jump on those too tough. They prefer the sports stuff and me talking about LaMelo and sports and talking shit about that people you know my demographic tends to um gravitate to that content more but in this one he is the only reality they um they gravitated to that one and I appreciate everyone's support of that one you know as well as the support of the channel but I'm about to get out of here do anyone want to jump up do anyone have anything to say before I get out of here um anyone want to jump in and say anything what they've seen in summer league you know, uh, Brandon, Wimby, whomever, you know, and chop it up. Or if not, I'm going to um, go ahead and end this spaces, the BTW spaces, and um, really, you know, um, start the day off. I'm going to, you know, light some incense, you know, and begin to meditate, pray, and and, um, and get into the spirit the way I need to, and then hop into the studio because I got all day and prepare some content. And then, um, decide what I'm going to speak on and then probably go on to YouTube in this afternoon, maybe, you know, and everything to do one of the shows on YouTube. So anyone got anything to say, you know, if you came here earlier, I'll be there, did a update for Miami. Cause you know, I'm on him over the Miami, over Miami, he getting Dame dollar. So he kind of did an update on what, cause he lives in Miami. So he kind of did an update on um, what's going on as far as what he's hearing down there. And it, obviously, Portland, the Portland Trailblazers is the issue now, not Miami, because they're trying to, of course, they're trying to collect what they can from Dane. You know, any company, D Jim will do that, you know, but they did break, you know, but see, Dane, you know, I'm about to do it. That's another one I'm about to do. Now, I don't think about it. I'm going to write that down. A Dane late and a dollar short, part two. You know, the, um, you know, and it's going to be talking about the whole narrative of players' loyalty to orgs and how you end up being done when you decide to stay, quote-unquote, loyal to an org. Dane is learning that lesson right now. You know, so a dang late and a dollar short, part two. I'm going to do that. I may do that one on Spaces because I did part one on Spaces. That may be my next Spaces, a dang late and a dollar short, part two. And we'll discuss... Um, Either I'll talk or we'll discuss the whole the whole concept of player loyalty to orgs and how in today's NBA that is obsolete. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, you can stay loyal to a team like Kimba did, like Dame has done, and other players have done, you know, and for the Cubs, Ernie Banks, you know, you know. And those players end up after they get old. All oh, the talk. It's just like you're getting a gold watch after you've after you've worked for the, your job for 20 or 30 years. 
and at the end of the and at the end of the damn thing, hopefully you have a retirement and the pension, and they'll give you a gold watch and send your ass to die. You know that's kind of how it ends up being. You know, particularly if you didn't particularly if you didn't keep up with your health. You know, but anyway, that's another talk. I I may do that one on Spaces. You know, I may do it on YouTube or like with this content here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over to YouTube as well. You know, because there's believe it or not, there's some people who are here who are not on YouTube. And vice versa. There's people who are on YouTube, on BTW YouTube, who do not come on Twitter. You know, so I got to make sure the whole tribe is fed. Same with Instagram. Same with TikTok. You know, I got people on TikTok that are not on any of these other platforms. Same with my Instagram. So, if no one else has anything to say, then I'm up out of here. And we'll talk again. Al B, send me a DM. If you hear any updates about Miami, send me a DM. You know what I'm saying? If you hear anything today about it, and when, hey, Albie, when Dane is officially in Miami, I'm going to do a spaces and you and I are going to come up and talk. We're going we're gonna to chop it up about that, if you don't mind. If you got time, I would like to have that talk with you about it. <laughs> you know, because I'm curious to see when the dust settles, what Miami's going to get, who they have, and how they're going to build around uh, what they're going to do, and your um, take on that whole thing. I'm, I'm looking to hear from you. If you don't mind, you know, I will chop it up. You know, if I do a space on that, I'll invite you up for, to talk about it. And, Albie, if you want, throughout the season, we'll we'll occasionally talk about Miami, you and I. We'll just chop it up here, if you don't mind. We'll just chop it up on Miami, you know, you know how, how Dame is fitting in, what they're doing. You know, we'll chop it up, if you don't mind. We'll do that. But anyway, I'm up out of here. But yeah, uh, Albie, send me a DM if something should drop today. Send me a DM, man. I might hop back on Spaces and talk about when um, Dame is officially in Miami. You know, if that's indeed going to happen. You know what I'm saying? You say it's going to happen. You say, they say it's going to happen. We'll see. All right? Y'all have a great one. This has been this has been Chief Bartran, the Bartranaza. Um, Y'all have a great one. Uh, today and I will you probably hear, I will be going live on YouTube later on today um, God willing and um, we'll chop it up some more uh, this has been a BTW uh, spaces a shout out to um, everyone in the BTW shout out to D to the K to the M&M shout out to the Lit House Rev and peace Tell my niggas, so me fire up, yeah. Hey. Tell my niggas on me fire up. Hey. Yo, it's a pink girl, is it light enough?